Let's look at how to use substitution to evaluate indefinite integrals. So in this video we're going to take a look at three indefinite integrals. We're going to use the method of substitution in each case and we're going to see how in each case that really what the substitution method is doing for us in these examples is helping us run the chain rule in reverse. So our first example is this product of x squared and cosine of x cubed. We're going to find the indefinite integral of this function. And the first thing we're going to do is just contemplate the pieces. And that may not sound like a very specific uh, piece of advice, but the more of these you do, the more you should just sort of take a look at the pieces and usually a substitution calls out to you. In this case, we're going to try u equals x cubed. Why does this work? Well, let's just see the example play out and then you'll get a sense of what cues you'll be looking for to inspire you to figure out a uh, possible substitution. So if u equals x cubed, du equals 3x squared dx. And the thing to keep in mind is that any substitution must be accompanied by a corresponding substitution pattern for the differential. Now it's easy to figure this out. You have to know how to take differentials. But anytime you write out what you think is a good substitution, your next step should be to calculate the differential because you're going to need to substitute both the variable itself and the differential into the old integral to move forward. Now our goal in this case is if this substitution is going to be successful then we're going to need to be able to express all of these in terms of this new variable u. So you can sort of imagine how to rearrange these so that you're successful in this case. So in the first term here, cosine of x cubed, we know we can rewrite that as cosine of u. That's pretty simple. And if we do a little algebra with the differential, we see that 1 third du is equal to x squared dx. So we can swap out the x squared dx for 1 third du. So what's happened here is that our substitution u equals x cubed has allowed us to rewrite the original integral as this, which we can sort of switch things around a little bit. It's um, better to write it this way, one-third the integral cosine u. So here's our original integral, which our substitution has allowed us to rewrite as this simpler integral in terms of u. Of course, the antiderivative of cosine is sine plus our constant of integration. And now we need, we were given a problem in terms of x. We need to give the answer in terms of x. So we need to substitute the original variable back into the formula, or to use a rather fashionable but un inelegant term, back substitute. So if we back substitute, we get one third sine of x cubed plus con a constant. Now, antiderivatives are very easy to check. I mean, after all, you just take the derivative. Are you, are you going to get the right thing back? So if you take the derivative of one-third sine of x cubed plus c, first of all, the derivative of a constant is zero, and the scalar slides out, so it's the same as this derivative. And the derivative of sine of x cubed is cosine of x cubed times 3x squared. So there you see the chain rule play out, and a little bit of simple... Our, uh, algebra uh, allows us to see that we get x squared cosine of x cubed, and that is indeed what we were looking for. So we have found the antiderivative, or the indefinite integral, of x squared cosine of x cubed. So one way to think of substitution is it's a handy way of keeping the books, keeping track of what you're doing when you try to run the chain rule in reverse. So here's our second example. Now this is just a polynomial. If you want to use brute force, you can. You can expand the integrand out to this 11th degree polynomial and then anti-differentiate. That's perfectly legitimate. But let's see if we can find a little more sophisticated method. So what we'll do in this case is we will apply substitution. And we will take 1 plus x squared to be our new variable. We'll call it u du then is 2x dx, and 1 half du is going to be x dx. And with all of this, we are, we are able to rewrite our integral in this form, and let's just make sure that all the pieces have been accounted for. So 1 plus x squared to the fifth is now u to the fifth, and x dx is now 1 half du. So we've taken into account all the parts of the original integral and we can proceed. The antiderivative of u to the fifth is 6u to the sixth, 1 over 6u to the sixth, 
And so we get this antiderivative, and then we substitute back in 1 plus x squared for u, and there is our antiderivative. Once again, this is something we can easily check. So we're going to take the derivative. Derivative of a constant is 0. The 1 12th slides out. And we get the power rule in conjunction with the chain rule with some simplification gives us the function we were looking for. So indeed, we have found the antiderivative of x times 1 plus x squared to the fifth power. Our final example is the antiderivative of this quotient, x over 1 plus x squared. And in this example, we're going to use the same substitution we did in the last problem. We're going to let u be 1 plus x squared, and we'll notice that 1 half du is x dx. We'll rewrite the integral just a little bit to make the next step clear. We claim that this integral can be rewritten as 1 half the integral 1 over u du. So again, we're just going to make sure all the parts fit together. So 1 over 1 plus x squared can be rewritten as 1 over u and x dx can be rewritten as 1 half du. Now we're good to go with the actual antiderivative. So antiderivative of 1 over u is ln of absolute value of u, and after back substituting, we obtain 1 half ln 1 plus x squared plus c. By the way, where did the absolute value bars go? Since 1 plus x squared is always positive, there's no need to put absolute value bars around that expression, so we drop the absolute value bars. Once again, we'll check, and we find that the derivative is indeed what we expected, and we have found the antiderivative, or the indefinite integral, of x over 1 plus x squared.